in the heart of Yorkshire. Our health service is hard at work. Fancy Amy, just waiting for that bed to be ready. Your double room, we are save you. A dedicated team working around the clock in casualty. Will somebody do me the next transfer, please? Thank you, loveliness. Anything else hurting? Yeah, my feelings. <laughs> nice to meet you, sweetheart. It's all tapped up for you. Ask somebody else. <laughs> They're with us for our most vulnerable moments. There you go. You're being braver than your mum. That tastes nice. No, oh, bless you. Facing life and death. You either want to live or you don't. Trauma and tears. <gasps> I think there's quite a chance you've broken your hip. Supporting each other through the toughest shifts. You're my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> this is Barnsley Casualty 24 7. Gonna send you home. <laughs> You're far too cheerful to be an AE. Somebody up there likes me. I love you. I love you. On shift tonight, Sister Benita Wainwright. I need another nursing resource. And I have nobody. Paediatric sister Kate Ellis. Oh, are you smiling? One. <laughs> Registrar Dr. Dan Buick. We need to have a look at your hip, don't we? And volunteer Jane Allen. My brilliant mocha chocolate -a lattes, <laughs> what they call them. Them fancy coffees. So prepare to share a shift. <laughs> right, shall we move you, Mrs? With the team at Barnsley Casualty. Clocking on this morning, 17 nurses will be expecting to care for 300 patients in the 30 bays that the casualty department has available. Hello, it's Benita. Sister Benita has Hi. just begun her shift. It's not got off to the best of starts. I'm struggling a little bit to get these out at the minute. I've got two lead nurses here with me. But... On a day shift, it's, it's just chaos. I find it's just, there's people everywhere. Yeah, I'm just going to move you, sweetheart, into a queue. Sometimes you, t you can't turn around for somebody being there. And <laughs> Why is it so busy? When I'm coordinating and you know you're the boss, you make those decisions to go and make a huge difference to somebody's care. All right, lovely. Bye, bye. But planning today will be a challenge. Resource is full, all 30 bays are occupied, and the emergency red phone won't stop ringing. Bansley Aini. Hello there, Bansley Aini. Hello, Bansley Aini. Yeah, I've just got loads going off down here, love it, at the minute. There's nearly 70 in and a few ambulances waiting. Ambulances are queuing around the block and paramedics have been struggling to get their calls answered. We couldn't even get through to Redford. Yeah, no, it's been, it's been like it's been a chuffing hotline. No, it's been like a hotline. Yeah. Jade! You have got one more space on this corridor here, and then that's it. Take your ambulances in your bays, but don't take any more until I move out. It's hard going, but staff pull together and make sure that patients are looked after and sorted out and cared for as best as we can. I think she's ready to go. Joyce, yeah, she's ready to go as in now. Hello, Barnsley Emergency Department. As one bay is freed up, the backlog will have to wait because the red emergency phone has rung again. When you get here, if you just head straight into Peds Resus and we'll see you there. Paramedics have been called out to a two-year-old with extremely low blood sugar levels. Sister Kate prepares Resus. Georgia, do you want to just grab the BM machine for us? When the red phone rings, and it's for a child, you feel sick and anxious about what's about to happen. What way is it going to go? How well is the child going to be when it arrives? How are you going to help? Consultant Dr Joe Stone will be leading the team today. A two-year-old that's had a non-responsive episode, they were hypoglycemic. 
Original BM was 0.8. They've had glucogel. It's come up to 2.6. And I think prior to that, there was a history of choking and unresponsiveness. A blood sugar reading of under 3 requires immediate treatment. 0.8 means there is a dangerously high risk of a hyperglycemic seizure. Oh, ETA was, yeah, so ETA is now. Caitlin arrives, carried into recess in the arms of her mum, Lauren. This is Caitlin. Yeah. She is at uh, three in June. OK. Hi, that Caitlin. Was, so initial call was through for a possible token and unconscious. Mum says, uh, little girl in bed with mum. Mum woke up to little girl choking, coughing, choking. And then, when we did a blood sugar, it was 0.8. Okay. She has had a very similar episode in December last okay. year, where her blood sugars were 1.7. Okay. Ended up on a drip up here uh, for five days. Okay. Was treated for sepsis and given Tommy flu. Okay. Uh, so mum right. was getting a bit concerned that there's sepsis. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, my name's Jo, I'm one of the doctors, so I understand that she's had an episode quite similar to this in yeah. December last year, yeah. OK. So this morning, I understand that you were in the bed and you woke up to her yeah. coughing. Well, it was. Well, I don't know what it was. She was, like, choking, like, she wanted to get something up, but... So was she conscious? She... Was she awake? No. So she was she was, like, in a really deep sleep. OK, that's fine. Given the time of year, Sister Kate takes a flu swab. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Stone checks for signs of meningitis. All right, hi, Caitlin. Hello. Okay, fine. Let's have a little look at your belly. Okay. It's fine. I'm just going to listen to your breathing, make sure it's okay. Can I just um, have a little look at her back? I just want to make sure she's not got any rashes. And how does she seem to you now? Does she seem. She's still very. She's not herself. Isn't she? Okay, fine. All right. So her blood sugar has come up, but I think because you're saying she's still not herself, maybe we will we ought to put the cannula in now. Is that all right with you? Okay. <laughs> so we can do it with her sat on your knee if you want. Okay. Can I just have a little look? I'm gonna have a band on. Finding a good vein and putting a needle into a wriggly toddler can be tricky. <laughs> It doesn't look like getting a cannula is going to be easy, so can we put cream on all four places and then we'll try again. We'll put some cream on her, OK, so that we, when we do do the cannula, it should be OK. Obviously, if her blood sugar drops while we're waiting for that, then we'll need to put it in more urgently, OK? Sister Kate is putting anaesthetic gel on the areas where they might have to give Caitlin emergency medication. Shall we have a little peek? They're concerned that if her glucose levels don't improve, she's at risk of having a seizure. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Barnsley. Today in Barnsley Casualty, the emergency phone has been ringing off the hook. Uh, yeah, come up to here and I'll, I'll sort it out from there. All right, lovely. Bye, bye, bye. The beds are all occupied, the corridors are full, and the ambulances are queuing to get in. Sister Benita has no choice but to call an urgent meeting to work out how they can cope. Right, folks, we currently have 66 in the department, and there are four in resource. So acuity is quite high, PEDS is very busy, there's about 18, 19 in there at the moment. Um, we've still got two, three nurses in there. The issues have just been massive numbers. We've had uh, 26 booking in the last hour again, so we've just been hit quite hard. Over in a packed out recess, two-year-old Caitlin is in hospital for the second time in a month with dangerously low blood sugar levels. Unless Dr Stone can work out the cause, the toddler is at risk of having a hyperglycemic seizure. Uh, does anybody in your family have any problems with diabetes, other hormone-related problems? diabetes, family. Regardless of whether it's meningitis, flu or diabetes, Caitlin needs to take on more sugar. Will you eat some toast? 
No. Oh, what, can you get some? She a good eater, is there anything? Normally, yeah. Can you get that one? You gonna eat these two? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> no. <laughs> Barnsley Casualty has a state of the art paediatric bay, but Sister Kate is going old school. You have a bite of toast for me? Yeah. Go on, and then I'll do a big blow of bubbles. Ready? You got some toast? <laughs> she took anything. No, she won't have anything. Not even a bourbon. Not even a bourbon. <laughs> when this happened last time, she didn't eat for a few days. Didn't she? As in, she would push it away. Dr. Stone consults the paediatric department for advice. Hi, uh, Miss Joe, one of the consultants in the emergency can department. Please, can I make a referral? Oh, are you smiling? <laughs> <laughs> it's a two and a half year old girl with a hypoglycemic episode. Um, so she was in bed with her mum this morning. <laughs> oh, get it, get it. Oh, clever girl. Um, we're currently trying to um, bribe her into having a biscuit or some toast, but she's refusing at the moment. Although Caitlin is brighter, her sugar level is still low. Until the risk of a seizure is reduced, the team remains on high alert. Well, Mummy had one, so I feel a bit... <gasps> oh, is it nice, Mummy? Mmm, nom, nom, nom. Sophia, do me a favour, love agent. Pass that three lead ECG monitor around here. This man's bradycardic and it's not on a monitor. Um, how far away are you guys? Will you stop admitting patients now? Can you make them better and send them home? I'd be much appreciated. In the hub, junior doctor Jake Mullen is on his way to see a potentially contagious 44-year-old. She's been isolated in cubicle 11. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Jake. I'm one of the doctors. So, okay, what's brought you to where you need to know? I've been bullied for about five days. I've not been able to eat or sleep or anything. Yeah. I've, just, I've been really dehydrated and just in pain everywhere. And then today I could barely move. I was just passing out. Any new rashes, anything like that? No. Neck stiffness? No. No problems with lights? Not so bad, no. No headaches? Yeah. Tell me about your headache. It hurts. <laughs> Whereabouts is the pain? <laughs> when someone comes into a &E with an infectious disease, um, depending on what sort of infection we think it is, we might need to isolate them. Part of me wants to stand at the back of the room and sort of talk to her from a distance, making sure that I don't breathe in what she is breathing out. Although it is flu season, there are many different strains. Dr Mullen is concerned that Kay is presenting with the most serious symptoms. We've got some masks about. It's all right if I check your observations, Kay. See what your temperature's doing, all that sort of stuff. Just have to take the proper precautions. Um, and if I get sick, I get sick. Um, that should come to the job. Okay, okay. So your oxygen levels a bit on the lower side. I don't think I'll be able to send you home. Is that all right? Yeah. You don't look very happy. I know it's because I'm, I'm, I'm borderline overphobic, and I, I like to be at all. Yeah, yeah. It just makes me really panic when I'm. Mm -hmm. A and E is pretty loud, pretty busy. There's lots of sick people. There's lots of noise. If you've got a patient who's agoraphobic, I think the worst possible place you could be is A and E. I'm afraid. <laughs> If Kay does have an uncommon variant of flu, Dr Mullen will have no choice but to keep her isolated. We get a cup. On days like today, volunteer Jane has just the tonic for a team rushed off their feet. Oh, sweetheart, you all right? Milk, no sugar, or milk and sugar? Milk, no sugar. Hello, love. When it's really, really busy, Sometimes the staff miss the breaks. One of them, my, my brilliant mocha choco loca lattes, or what they call them, <laughs> them fancy coffees. It's nice that we can probably give them a quick drink to make sure that they're keeping their levels up. She wants a nice coffee, okay, she's going to get a nice coffee. I'm very tired. Like Benita Ollis likes her coffee. She does like her coffee, that girl. 
I'll make it a strong one. Right? Uh, so it's just nice to, to make sure that they can be looked after as well. Right. Now this, a new coffee company, a new <laughs> coffee company called Beds. Brews for the emergency department. And I'm your very own barrister. How's that? Look after the ones that's looking after us. Can you remember years ago, it were either a white coffee or a black coffee. That were your choice. And now we've got espresso and macchiato. I can remember when cups of coffee were 50 pence. I've always known it as three pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Sit shot put. Good news in recess. Caitlin's blood sugar levels are on the rise. She's not got meningitis, and the flu results have just come back. It's negative. No flu. And the two-year-old seems to have perked up a lot. <laughs> Ready? Closer, get closer. She looks even better. <laughs> right, shall we move you, Mrs? With Caitlin on the mend. Come on then, trouble. <laughs> the resus bay needs to be freed up for an incoming red phone emergency. But as this is her second episode in a month, she's heading over to the paediatric ward to be monitored. Where are you? <gasps> are you going to the ward now? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be very, very good for them. All right, see you later, Caitlin. <laughs> Where are we going? Come on, then. Caitlin only had to stay the one night before being referred to the Northern General Hospital for further tests. Hello, Barnes Emergency Department. Emergency calls have been coming in all day. Keeping the pressure on Sister Benita. He's not going to meet Sister Zane. But for junior Dr. Alex Chatburn, who's only worked in the department for three months, it's a different story. Hello, Amy Bansley. If I'm not by the red phone when it rings, I feel annoyed because I want to see all the patients who come in by the red phone, as every doctor does. It's kind of a bit of a scramble to be able to see the sick patients so you can do things which fix things. Dr. Chapman's next patient has a potentially life threatening condition. It's an 88 year old chap. Paramedics are rushing in an 88 year old with a chronic irregular heart rate. Who's struggling to breathe? Do we have beds in recess? Cool. Um, can you bring them to recess, please? Having previously suffered from a stroke, they're concerned he's at risk of another. Bill is immediately brought into recess bay one. Hello, doctor. Hello. Okay. I'm Alex, one of the doctors. Who's that? We'll set you up a bit. There you go. We're going to come at you from a couple of angles. Roxy's going to put some stickers on your chest. The ambulance guys are just going to tell us what the matter is. Bill is 88. He's had a six day history of increased shortness of breath. His heart rate is anything between 140 and 160. The finger probe but 12 lead shows it's fast air. The urgent priority is to lower Bill's heart rate to get him out of danger. Path medical history is um, osteoarthritis. Type 2 diabetes, he's medicated metformin mm -hmm. but took the decision upon himself to stop taking that. Do you mind if I just drop this down? We need to put a cannula into you and take some blood tests. Put your nose through tight, it's just a bit of oxygen to help you breathe in. So you've had a bit of problems with your breathing for the past six days, you say? Yeah, no more than that, I think. Yeah. 
Yes. You're on some tablets that you take for it. Do you take them at home? No. No. When did you stop taking them? Uh, a week or fortnight ago. A week or fortnight ago. Okay. Some patients can be really challenging. Sometimes they've got conditions that I, as an A&E doctor, can't really treat, um, but they're coming looking for help, and then you, it gets quite frustrating because you want to be able to provide them with something that can fix them, but that's not available. Bill's wife Elizabeth and son Adrian arrive. You all right? Yeah. I'm going to ask your wife how you've been in the past couple of days. No, uh, terrible. Terrible. How do you mean terrible? Um, he has breathing. <laughs> and the last couple of nights just rolling in pain mm. from, from the knees down. Not too good. Um, I'm saying to great I'm saying to if I'm on the way out. No. So what we'll do is give you some tablets to take some water off, give you some of the digoxin to help slow the heart down. We won't do it straight away, but we'll gradually bring it. Chest x-ray, as I said, just to make sure there's nothing else going on. Dr Chapburn's priority is to get the heart rate under control. Unless he can, Bill is at risk of another stroke. I need another nursing resource and I have nobody. I have nobody. Sister Benita has struggled all day to keep her shift on track. The number of emergency red phone admissions has been much higher than usual, causing a strain on even the best laid plans. Are you all right round there? Yeah. South. Uh, no, apart from a big glass of wine. <laughs> bye, bye. She's checking all the areas of casualty to see if there are any spaces anywhere. Sorry, just do me a favour, move this chap here, here, because he's not in a corridor space, onto here, because I can't get past. No, he, there. I struggle. <laughs> I do struggle, and sometimes I think when you've got so many people saying your name, that bit of me that I should keep quiet um, just comes out and snaps a little bit. I'm fed up. I've just chased, 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 all afternoon to my chuffing head in. When resource is full, the impact on the rest of the department is huge. It's kind of like a red light effect, I guess. And until patients are starting to be discharged in other areas, you can't move those patients. In Rhesus, Bill's erratic heart rate is still too high. He's not been taking the medication that usually controls it and he's struggling to breathe. Bill? Yeah, all right. Yeah. Deep breath in. And out. And in. Dr Chapman has ordered an X-ray to rule out complications with his lungs. Hello. What are you going to do with that? So oh, you're just parking up on it. It's going to take a chest X-ray roll then, don't Come on, then. I'll just check your number on here. Have you got a wristband? Some of the things people come in with, you think, why have you come in now after all these days and weeks of suffering? So, just while we take the X-ray, you all right just to stand outside the door? It's going to be a few minutes. Barnsley well, Annie gets an interesting mix of patients. There seems to be a big cohort of elderly people who don't like coming to hospital. They'll just stay at home, stick looking after themselves and think, I can get through this. Um, so, it's going to keep an eye on your blood pressure for the next couple of minutes because this slows your heart down, but it also can affect the blood pressure, so we just have to be a bit careful. Okay. Dr Chapman has prescribed a drug to slow Bill's heart rate and lower his blood pressure, but getting the exact dose is critical. He checks with consultant Dr Liz Doherty. Because it keeps on going from, like, 90, 100, 120 to 170, but 
So it's quite hard to find the middle round of when is enough is enough. Yeah. But it's, I think the peaks have come down a bit. I had dreams of running around the corridors, saving lives, making everyone better, making them happy. And then most of the time, in real life, it's not like that. You kind of do a bit of work, help them get rid of some pain, but then there's still something going on in the background. Fine. Just going to give you one more. That was my consultant. She likes to keep eyes. Make sure you make sure you don't play that. <laughs> you better, I'm the one with the syringe. <laughs> All Bill and his family can now do is wait to see if the doctors have got the balance right to get his heart rate back to normal. When helping out, you all right, darling? Volunteer Jane takes her duties very seriously. See, it's very Chanel. That's five I've made this morning. I could shut up my own coffee shop, shouldn't I? What's that coffee like? Up oh, nice and up, it's stuck to the side. You can tell when it's a good coffee, it's when it's like it's a good pint and it sticks to the side. But it's not just the coffee she wants to get right. She's also the perfect person to test drive newly fixed bed trolleys. Put brake on. Right, go on then now. Well, it's mended then, isn't it? Hey, all right. Oh, jeez. Well, it's not brought then, is it? I think they fix them and just not took stickers off. Should we take a first spin now? <laughs> <laughs> not likely. Get me off. Oh, get me off this. <laughs> oh, sorry, sweetheart. No, but it's all sorry, darling. No, you're fine. You're at best place. I'm officially off my trolley. I said, let's fix that, isn't it? Put them back in service. <laughs> In the hub, Dr Mullen has an idea to help Kay, who may have a highly contagious strain of flu. She's also borderline agoraphobic. First, he needs to check with his consultant, Dr Joe Behan. I've got a lady that I've assessed, okay. but the history is very, very flu-like, and she's just tested positive for flu. Okay. So I'm thinking if her obs have returned to normal, I can probably try and get her home. Yeah. So, Kay. I don't know if you've already been told, your swab came back and it tested positive for flu A, which is one of the more common ones. So, it's what we thought, it is flu. Um, I've had a chat with my consultant, um, and I think we've decided that if your observations are improving, the return to normal, given the fact we have good evidence that it's flu, we'd be happy with discharging you home. Oh, cool. Should be good news. <laughs> so, we'll just, we'll just see what we get now, okay? If you, a hey, 97, perfect, okay. Drink a lot, take it easy for the next few days. Try and avoid being around anyone who's not vaccinated. And um, we'll go from there, is that all right? Are you happy going home? Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, thank you. lovely to meet you. <laughs> Most doctors you'll find try and try their best to lead a healthy lifestyle. Some of us take vitamin C supplements. Um, I don't know if that works, but... <laughs> It makes us feel better about ourselves. So paranoid about getting flu this year. In the hub, Dr Chapman is preparing to see his next patient. Jane, in cubicle four. So I'm Alex, I'm one of the doctors. Who have you brought with you? Yeah, I'm next door neighbour. I was going to say daughter, so it was a good job I didn't guess. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a bit about what's happened. I was getting my neighbours shopping out to go for a car. Yeah. And I only had my flu flops on, and there were lots of moss around the car, which I didn't realise. Yeah. And I just, just, just mm. gone. Oh. Yeah, it was <laughs> so, getting shopping out, hit some moss, fell backwards, yeah. smack in the back of your head. Yeah, yeah. Do you hurt anything else? My, my elbow slide. Yeah. Do you lose consciousness at all? No, I think I did. I think I just saw a start. Any vomiting since? Uh, no. And then any weakness in your arms or legs? No. No? I have to ask you all these questions from a head injury perspective, don't worry. Um, fine. And do you have a responsible adult to look after you at home if I deem you fit to go? 
Yeah. Are you responsible? Yeah. <laughs> Just a bit. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Should we examine you? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to shine a bright light in your eyes. Let's look at me. A blow to the head can be severe enough to cause bleeding in the brain. Mm -hmm. So Dr Chapman needs to carry out a series of tests. Any double vision at all? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, this is a basically a little pin. It doesn't hurt and it doesn't cause blood. But I just wanted you to tell me if you can feel it. Feel that? Yeah. 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 Ow. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the worst. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. All right. Let's have a look at your elbow. But you're able to. Yeah, okay. Don't need to do a CT head. There's no indications that you've had a high risk head injury. You're not on anything that thins your blood, are you? Um, so we'll fix that up for you and get you home. Perfect. All right, look towards your son. It's on this side, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's really straightforward. Bit of glue and you'll be sorted. It's about one centimetre straight cut on the back of your head. It's not that. Yeah, because there's lots of blood vessels that go around the head, so they bleed quite a lot. All right, this is a bit of glue. You OK? Yeah. Just need to press it for a couple of seconds. Good work day would involve a couple of interesting patients, maybe a couple of sick ones and some straightforward stuff that is relatively easy to diagnose and to treat, but leaves the patient satisfied. Right, that's everything done. Thank you. All right. So essentially, if you're starting to be more drowsy than you should be, have any vomiting, can't move an arm or a leg or something like that, you promise to come back. Yeah, promise. <laughs> Look after yourself. Yeah, thank All you right. so much. Have a good afternoon. All patched up, Jane was one of the lucky patients who didn't have to wait too long to be seen. Hello, Barnsley. How old is he? How long are you going to be? Hello, Barnsley ED. The phones in the hub have not stopped ringing at Barnsley Hospital today. I'm going to disconnect this hotline tomorrow. I've had enough today. Oh, it's doing my head in, and it? it's one in one hour. Even the doctors have noticed the increase in calls. Yeah, it does tell you welcome to my line. <laughs> Hello, it's Benita. But while the patient numbers keep rising, there is some good news in recess. Yeah. Can you just tell me your full name and your birthday? Yeah. Oh, you want to come to the party? Yeah. You're going to invite me. Bill is back on the right balance of meds and back to his normal self. <laughs> Are you allergic to anything? Yeah, more related to her. In hospitals. Oh. Are you allergic to hospitals? No, I don't know <laughs> anyone. It's all right, it's getting there now. Sorry. It's coming back to normal. Yeah, it's. Uh... <laughs> There's always a bit of uncertainty and nervousness when you're treating people, how they're going to react to you as a doctor. But you get to chat to hundreds of different types of people from all walks of life. They've all got pretty interesting stories most of the time. You've got your elderly patients who've been in the world wars or have done this or done that. And you were a butcher, weren't you, Dad? Yeah. In the Merchant Navy. Worked in the butcher's shop, didn't you, on the Queen Mary? And Elizabeth. And the Elizabeth. Mauritania. He's been drunk in more countries than I have. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the favourite place you got drunk, Dad? Hamburg. Hamburg. <laughs> Bill was transferred up onto the ward for observation. Thank you very much. No worries. Got any questions? Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Before being allowed home the next day. Thank you so much. You're Thank you. Just tea, just need some cup of tea. English tea. Empire was built on tea, Dad. You got a patient that can come out of a cubicle? With so many red phone admissions, Dr. Buick is struggling to find somewhere private to assess his next patient. James, you got anyone can come out? Finally, he secures a cubicle for a 51-year-old with an infected hip 
and a medical history that could complicate matters. Hi, right, Richard. Come on through. My name's Dan. I'm one of the doctors. Take a seat for me. Um, I've had a read through the notes from the paramedics, but I'm just trying to clarify a few points. How long has it been painful for? Ten days now. Ten days? Yeah, I'm finding it difficult to, to bear okay, weight. Mmm, I can see. We need to have a look at your hip, don't we? Yeah. Do you take any medications? No, no. None at all? Have you injected drugs at all? Yeah. Currently or in the past? In the past. OK, how long in the past? Last week I didn't inject that. Okay, but I that side. Do you enjoy injecting both sides? I, I am. Treating people with addictions is is challenging. Um, they're vulnerable. They uh, don't necessarily have good health as a result of that. Um, and so, firstly, diagnosis can be difficult. Because what, sorry? And I was not, I would never intention to stop me. When have you last injected? Yeah, about this time last week, across my life. Into the right groin? Into the right. OK, before that? One. Before that? Before that. Regularly before that? Oh, no, not regularly before that. OK. Right, so. Um, let me grab a trolley. We'll bother in here and get you on that, and then I'll have a look, proper look at your hip. OK, give me a moment. Understandably, people have a lot of concerns about um, relaying some of that information sometimes. So, um, patients who are intravenous drug users um, often find that quite difficult. Whoa. Causing you a lot of bother, isn't it? So, whereabouts is the pain? If, if you've got one point where if you point to, that's where the pain is, or is it more sort of. This is hurting me. This. Yes. This is what's happened over the last 10 days. So have you had that the whole time? Yeah. Is that sore as I'm touching it? Yeah. Mm. Sorry. 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 And do you know what, what brought that along? No. No, I've not bashed it. Uh, Burnt it? Oh, oh, no. As I'm pushing there? Yeah. yeah. Got a pain there? Yeah. Can I have, just have a look at your groin itself? Yeah. You've injected. I think in situations like these, it's too easy to say, you know, I'm the doctor, I just come in and provide the treatment here and now. Can you lift this leg up for me? If I take the weight and I lift, you're still getting pain there. Part of my role is trying to improve people's health in general, uh, in general terms, so not just a poorly hip or elbow or whatever, but actually their, their over, overall well-being. Got to find out, and he's got to Needs sorting. I agree. I agree. I'm getting fed up with it because some days I wait up and I can't stop. Tears rolling down. Yeah, yeah. It's clearly causing you a lot of pain, isn't it? The cause of Richard's infection remains elusive, and his addictions make the diagnosis more complicated. With the department under such pressure, Dr. Buick needs to find the right answers as quickly as possible. He's a 51-year-old chap. I'm referring as a query osteomyelitis, query septic joint. He's had 10 days worth of uh, severe left hip pain, struggling to walk due to it. Um, Richard's hip is causing him severe pain. He's Dr. Buick has asked orthopaedics to help with the assessment. He suspects the infection is rooted deep in the hip joint, making it harder to treat. Let's try and sort this out. We need to x-ray your hip, OK? I need to take some bloods from you as well. Yeah. All right. Um, what we'll do, the bloods take the longest. Yeah. So let me take the bloods and get them sent, yeah. and then we can get you around for an x-ray. Normally, I'm normally Kath. Your challenge. Patients that inject uh, drugs into their veins recreationally, it's often difficult to find a vein because they've, they've found all those veins to be able to inject drugs into. Um, so it's more, more challenging. Yeah. 
I think there's a there's a possible there. Do you mind if we we see if I can get some bloods from you? Shout scratch. Don't tell me she asked you. Yeah, you know the drill. Yeah. I have to say something. Yeah, we're there. We are. We're up and running. <laughs> That's all right. And it's a small needle, so it should stop bleeding pretty quick. I'll get these sent, request an x ray, and then I'll send you around. Um, yeah, I've never come across a doctor that's been able to do it like that without ultrasound. It's really, really hard. On your left, you see a reception for x ray. Richard is grateful to Dr. Buick and the care he's giving. Would you take a seat in the waiting room? I'll keep an eye out for your x-ray and I'll call you through when I've seen that and probably got your bloods as well. Is that all right? OK. Is that room now free? Yeah. But on such a busy day, it'll be some time before the results come back and Richard's beginning to feel anxious. I haven't had a foggy year, so what's going on? All I've done is chase patients out of this department so I don't get shouted at. Before Sister Benita finishes her shift, she's busy trying to process as many patients as possible. Who's just took my hand over? Nobody. There's a problem in cubicle three. Richard has been assessed by orthopaedics, but he's now become agitated about the proposed treatment. Dr. Buick has been urgently called. No, I've really got to pot if you yeah. wanted to keep him. Yeah. But because I'm an addict, yeah. I'm not a sub texting. Yeah. He can't help me with that. Right. And uh, I've tried to explain to him that as an addict, you know, middle of the night, I'm going to want to, what I'm going to do in a bad way. Yeah. Richard has come to a difficult decision. My worry for Richard is obviously that, that treatment is for a reason, it's to get him better. Um, and my worry is that it would get worse. Um, you know, which is not what I signed up for. I had to tell him to. I yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah, let me in. I need to let that down. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. You don't want to like that. No, I wish we had a better solution for you. Yeah, you can understand. It's your fault. I put, me, I put myself in this situation. Yeah, but our job isn't to punish you, it's to try and, try and work something out with you, isn't it? My worry is that it, you know things will get worse and he will have uh, further problems as a result. Um, and I think that's partly a failing on our behalf if we've not come up with a plan with him um, that works for everyone. All right. No, thank you. Have you okay. Have you no, you're fine. You're fine. Take thank, care. Thank you very much. All right. It's really fine. good. All right. Uh, cheers. Thank you. Okay. Richard didn't return to the hospital. Dr. Buick is hoping that the antibiotics have at least helped clear up the infection in his hip. Before she can head home, Sister Benita hands over to the next shift. It's been awful. Um, there's been 65 plus all afternoon, 20 plus each hour. Resus has just been absolutely annihilated, hasn't it? There are days that are really sad and hard and a slog, and you think, why did I ever do this? We are on nine doctor wait, 32 waiting to be seen, 12 to triage. We are one doctor down and six while well, four. Um, and that's it from me. I need a big one. But then there are other days I go home and I, th I feel like I've done a really good job and I won't do anything else. Finally. It's time for this Barnsley casualty team to clock off. Ride along with the heroes keeping our roads safe. The new series of motorway cops catching Britain's speeders starts next Monday at nine. And what happened to British student Meredith Kircher? We examine her murder brand new at 10 tomorrow. Next 999 critical condition.